All right, I think this is gonna be a fun video. Something big, like really big, recently happened in One Piece, and weirdly enough, it's provided us with a massive insight into how YouTubers operate. And quick spoiler warning for One Piece fans who aren't caught up with the manga, you, uh, you probably don't wanna watch this video, so here's your chance to back out. But because it's something very colossal that happened, it means that every YouTuber who covers One Piece just had to talk about it, which is surprisingly rare, much more rare than you'd think. And as part of that, they all had to make their own unique thumbnail for the topic, and that topic is about this panel. Panel, which shows Luffy's head morphing into miscellaneous goop after an elephant told us that Joy Boy had returned. Now, if you're not a One Piece fan, I know those are a lot of the, the very strange words, but trust me, it is big stuff. So I thought it would be really interesting to see how different creators tackled this challenge from a thumbnail perspective. Because events like this are kind of like Eurovision. You grab 40 creators, you stick them all on a stage, and you see how each one chooses to design their set. And it's very enlightening because it shows you a lot about the inner workings of these creators. Uh, so I guess I'll start with mine. My my thumbnail is super simple because the final panel only told us two things. One, that Luffy is smiling ominously, and two, that there is miscellaneous goop on his head. So that's all I did because I think that's all it needed to get the point across. I did ask my artist to add some drips from his fingers because I wanted some nice depth, and I also added a nice bright arrow because uh, I like arrows and I couldn't resist. And as for why I asked for the goo to be purple and red, you will see why very shortly. But next up here is how O'Hara tackled the Luffy Joy Boy topic, which is a very nice thumbnail. It has good proportions, with the close-up Luffy taking up two-thirds of the frame and the full-body Luffy using one-third. It feels ready for action and the colors are very well chosen. A nice blue in the background to contrast strongly against the yellows and reds of Luffy, or even Luffy's plural. And speaking of color, O'Hara went with making the goo yellow, which is what almost everyone else did as well. It's a really good thumbnail, I think much better than mine in terms of generating action-packed excitement. But I should also say that he did make a second video on this topic where we see a return of the goo head and this like Super Saiyan Luffy over here. Visually, it's a pretty extremely similar concept to the first, right down to the color scheme and even the text elements. But you know, to be fair, there's, there's no need to fix something that isn't broken. Let's check out Anime Balls Deep now, who are a group of very clickable individuals. And I'll say right at the beginning, don't be too put off by the picture quality. It's very pixely and rough, but when you look at it in actual thumbnail size, it doesn't really matter too much. And I like the idea happening here, especially with the Luffy happening on the left. I like him casting the shadow of the sun god Nika. What I do like a lot less is the background, it's a bit gray and lifeless, but to be fair, it does contrast well against Luffy's colors. So yeah, whatever, it's fine. And I did initially like this image of Luffy on the right with the goo head and doing his trademark pose. Uh, but at this point, I've really come to hate it because this is one of the most insightful things about this whole event. This image got used a lot. And I'm not sure who the original architect of the picture was, but I want you to know that you have made the collective One Piece YouTube community a lot of money, like a lot. Because I'm only showing Showing a couple of examples here, but this image was used so much that I am legitimately sick of looking at it. Now it's worth pointing out that a lot of channels don't quite make enough money to be able to commission their own artists for thumbnails, so they've got to make do with whatever Google Sama provides. However, this image was used by a lot of channels who certainly do have, you know, a bit of money to spare. And in general, I think it's just bad for branding purposes. Every channel that used this image now have videos that look pretty much identical with no identity of their own. And I would like to give special mention to a channel named Anime OP who has this thumbnail here, which displays a rather fun trick. What's happening here is that they've added subtitles in an attempt to make it look like a screenshot from the anime, basically implying that this is a new episode and something official that you haven't seen. And I really don't know how I feel about this tactic because it's quite sneaky and underhanded, very clickbaity. But at the same time, I do like the creativity because it's telling a story. It might be a very dishonest story, but it does conjure a solid feeling. Now let's head to Mr. Morge, who also used this image of Luffy for his thumbnail. Again, I think that's a detriment when everyone else is using the exact same picture. However, I do enjoy the way Morge used it, particularly with how it's framed against the background. There's a nice burst of light and an almost Renaissance halo style effect, which pops really funly because everything else is black. Don't think the word funly is a word, but I said it. And it also makes Luffy pop a lot more than any of the thumbnails did who use this image. It's also a much better quality image than most of the others used. I just, eh. The only problem is I can't tell that it's a Mr. Morge video just by looking at the thumbnail alone. Oh, and if you're curious about why he put the text up top, it's because YouTube does this kind of annoying thing where it places the video time in the bottom right-hand corner, which often obscures any text. So many creators instead opt to put the text up top so it remains legible. For something very, very different now, here's Tekking 101. This is what I would call a very classic Tekking thumbnail. I always love seeing what he does because I never know what to expect. And in this case, Joy Boy is just 
almost like an MS Paint drawing with a, a, a poneglyph texture. It's definitely not designed specifically to take advantage of the hype of the situation, but I've done a whole video on teching before. He's just a guy who does his own thing and that makes him unique. And as much as I'm not quite sold on the thumbnail itself, I feel like it's a bit too left field and the beach atmosphere is far more relaxing than it is hype. And I also wish that Luffy was slightly brighter, but the one thing I will give it is that it's perfectly on brand and immediately recognizable as a teching video. To BDA lore now, and we have a nice unique image, at least compared to all of the goo heads I saw. And first up, I'm always a big fan of the red and white color scheme of the background. It pops very nicely, and the image of Luffy is also quite clean, displaying some rather powersome awakening. The only thing is I'd say that the Luffy image feels a bit like awkwardly squashed. Like I feel the more natural image of Luffy is something like this. And that could have been a purposeful choice made to not obscure the text behind him. But it doesn't necessarily matter too much because people don't usually stop and examine thumbnails like works in a gallery. They just need to very quickly grab your attention. And again, here there is a clear brand identity. I know that this is a BDA law video because the elements are unique and solidly him. King of Lightning is next up, who is one of the few creators who opted not to use an image of the awakened Luffy, instead going for a screenshot from Film Z. Similarly to BDA Law, there's quite a good color scheme happening. Again, red and white, look, it just works. Plus there is some good depth with Luffy's pose and the manga panels in the background create a nice texture. With that said, in my opinion, it's a bit on the plain side for this sort of situation. As much as I did dunk on all of the channels who use the same image of the goo-headed Luffy, at the very least, they were taking advantage of a current trend. Whereas KOL's thumbnail is very visually appealing, but it doesn't make a strong enough connection to current events, especially with the film Z era Luffy, because that movie came out in 2012. So it makes the thumbnail look a bit dated and old fashioned as a result. Whereas what we really want to achieve is something new and fresh. Now back to Goo and Luffy, we are far from done with him because here is a thumbnail from Nina2119, a French YouTuber who used the image quite well, I think. It has a quality to it that most of the others were unable to achieve with lighting and atmosphere. And I also like the silhouettes of Luffy and Nika in the background with the glowing eyes. Although I should say that another YouTuber known as The Slabs did employ a very similar idea and arguably better because I just prefer the bright yellow background. It draws the eye a lot easier. Although what I really don't like about it is using the One Piece logo. To me, it just serves no real purpose because anyone looking at this image knows that it's One Piece. And if they don't, then that logo is not going to be the thing that pushes them into clicking. And for a bit of a combo idea, here is Odameshi Kun's thumbnail, who I want to highlight because at the very least he changed the overused goo head image to have a red effect. I'd say they landed on a shade that's probably a bit on the dark side, but when it's surrounded by all sorts of bright yellows, yeah, it's not too bad. At the very least, it looks a little different to everyone else who used this picture. Now we have what I think is my personal favorite thumbnail of this trend, which comes from Goji, another well-known French YouTuber who has presented this magnificent image. It kind of does what my thumbnail was aiming to actually. You know, all we have to work with is the smile and some head goo, so that's all the thumbnail really needs. Except Goji has accomplished this idea on a much more epic scale. I really love it because it conveys such an atmosphere. It's powerful, terrifying, implies action. And of course, it's a unique image. Nobody else has this. Also, if you look very closely, you'll see that it's watermarked, which is a really good idea because as we've already seen, artwork tends to get stolen quite a bit. As another example, the art from Ohara's thumbnail was lifted into a variety of thumbnails because here you see a very familiar looking Luffy. And not only that, but I also had my art taken from a channel called Devil No Me. The young Kaido in this picture was something that I commissioned for a video made all the way back in early January, which I wouldn't mind so much if it was a small channel, but Devil No Me has 144,000 subscribers and this video has well over 100,000 views. So we're at the point where he can definitely afford to make his own art. Also, this thumbnail is of course another example of using the subtitle trick, trying to make it look like an anime screenshot, which is a very prevalent technique and it does happen with English channels as well. For some outliers now, here is the very appropriately named Joy Boy Theories. Although ironically, I think he is the only channel who elected not to use an image of Luffy at all. Instead going for the picture of our CP0 agent drawn by the stupidly talented Revijo. And as cool as an image as this is though, uh, I do think it needed to be Luffy because that is the moment we're in. This is probably the biggest event that's happened in One Piece in 
I don't know, potentially ever. So choosing not to focus on it probably isn't the greatest of ideas, but on the bright side, Joy Boy's thumbnails always have a very strong brand due to Ravajo's incredibly distinct art style. So no matter what gets drawn, that identity remains. And one other I'd like to highlight is Mademoiselle Soso, who you may guess is also a French YouTuber. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because it's the only thumbnail I found with an actual human face. A practice that I'm kind of torn about, at least on Grand Line Review, because having your face in thumbnails automatically ensures that all of your videos have that solid identity that I've been rambling on and on and on about. On the other hand, I don't know if using your face is the way to appeal to the widest audience possible, at least in this niche. Because in the end, I feel like One Piece fans overall, they just want One Piece. So that's what I prefer to give them. I don't really know though, because no huge One Piece YouTuber has really explored that whole facial idea yet. So maybe it's a gold mine just waiting to be tapped. But I thought this was a really interesting exploration. Of course, there are literally hundreds of thumbnails of these videos so I couldn't examine each and every single one, but it's very rare that the global One Piece YouTube community each tackle the exact same idea at the exact same time. And I've really enjoyed seeing everyone's unique spin, just as you will now enjoy seeing my dog. All right, Bucky, would you like a treat? Up, oh, good boy. Nom 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 nom. Nom 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 nom. 